Good morning, Carla. Thank you so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate your time. It is absolutely valuable. I can just understand how busy you are. I came across on your LinkedIn profile and thought, oh my God, I must connect with you. So thank you so much. It's a pleasure, Trisha. Thank you very much for having me. You are most welcome. So please correct me if I'm wrong. You are Jordanian, which is fantastic to see someone um, within that area, you know, building up their personal brand and having a really strong uh, presence on the digital space in this part of the world. Walk us through how you got there. Okay. Um, uh, my, my name is Khaled El Ahmed. I'm a Jordanian American. I live in Jordan since 2009. Before that, I was in the States. Uh, I moved into uh, Jordan uh, and I had, uh, I was into blogging, then social media came and we moved, migrated from uh, blogging to Twitter and I was active there for a couple of years. Then we went into Facebook and uh, by 2021, I decided to quit Facebook and I moved away from Facebook. And I was heavily on LinkedIn. I, I've been on LinkedIn since 2005, but LinkedIn changed, uh, especially in, 2000, in 2020. And I saw a video for Gary Vaynerchuk that says LinkedIn 2020 is Facebook 2012. What he meant by that, the, the algorithm of uh, reach at uh, LinkedIn it's, is much easier than uh, it's on Facebook. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect is you can always find quality connections and decision makers on LinkedIn, which is something you cannot find on Facebook. So I said, let me invest my energy and time in the right place. And I went heavy on LinkedIn ever since. Fantastic. Amazing. I think that's a really good analogy because, um, you know, unless that you are doing these types of things frequently, you know, personal branding and getting yourself known with across the digital space, you probably don't pay too much attention to how algorithms work, but it can certainly work in your favor. You know, if you are keeping an eye out on it, especially for business purposes. So yeah, I noticed that um, you work a little bit with startups, with personal branding for the individuals, how would one begin or, you know, what would be the importance of, of having a digital presence? Yeah, it's uh, first of all, you have, you have to have a, a, your objective. Why do you want to be, why do you want to build a personal brand? And uh, there are so many ways why do you want to be active? Uh, let's take, for example, LinkedIn. So I, I heard this from Justin Welch. He says, sometimes people want to create a personal brand or dopamine, uh, because they like the engagement they get from people. Others, they want to create a thought leadership. They want to build credibility with their community. Some, they want to build their newsletter subscribers, or uh, they want to sell. So uh, it is important to know why do I want to build my personal brand at the beginning. Then I move in to do an inventory for my skills and PowerPoint and weakness and challenges. What things do I know how to do? So, uh, and what challenges do I have? Uh, what are my uh, values? Uh, and when, once I start asking myself these questions, I can figure out uh, how can I uh, create a paid service that I can offer to people? It could be paid service or a product or whatever. It is important to lead uh, and have a personal brand. It is, it is not uh, an optional anymore because uh, you control the narratives. If you, are, if you have a strong personal brand, everything written about you, you, you are in, in charge. If you don't have a personal brand, you will see bits and pieces written about you or when somebody searches for your name and now it's everywhere. If you go... If you travel to the States and you're not a citizen, they will check your social media. If you apply for a visa, some countries, they check your, apply for universities, they will check your social media, even jobs nowadays. So why, why should I leave that to, uh, you know, to accident? Why shouldn't I be in control of what appears when people search for my social media? For example, uh, when I was in blogging, you know, blogging was the first type of UGC uh, user-generated content uh, back then. 
So we did not know how to communicate with each other. So most of our communications was fights. You know, we would argue, fights, and everything. So when you search for my name back then, all you see is arguments, arguments, arguments on the blog sphere. And then when I moved to social media and became heavily active, thank God all the arguments went to the third page. So the good stuff is in the first page. <laughs> Very good. I think uh, you really, you know, you put a good point out because these days, you know, we're not flying to as many networking events as we used to. We probably don't have as many after work drinks or after work dinners. Um, clients, for example, you know, I mean, they probably will return. And as I do agree that the customer or the client should always, um, you know, you should have it in face where possible. But exactly the digital, uh, uh, the, your digital presence is inevitable that it has to be strong if you want to be known as a subject matter expert. Um, and I think at the end of the day, the success, well, in my opinion, it's just about being consistent, but consistent about the right message. Definitely. You have to you have to dig for your niche. You have to know uh, what's uh, what's what subject interests you. Uh, and then uh, where are you strong in this subject? And then you have to find your target audience. So uh, you have to have this statement: I can help this uh, uh, target audience solve this pain or reach their goal by doing this to them. So you have to know exactly your niche. Who are you helping? How are you helping them to solve their uh, issue? Uh, it's always good to look for the pain for this small group of people. Uh, once you know the pain and how, from your experience, how did you get over that? How can you help them solve it? That's, that's the key. Mm, fantastic. I think you're right. And people perhaps just think of LinkedIn or social media without any thought or strategy behind it. But, you know, if you're really trying to establish yourself within your own sector or domain, it, it's really important that you are focused, strategic, targeted, especially now in relation to perhaps, you know, where I'm coming from as a job seeker or as an aspiring C-suite, aspiring um, board member, you know, it, it takes time. It's not something that just happens overnight that that you're known you get a job. Definitely. I, you know, uh, there are two books that I would like to talk about. The first book is called The uh, Unfair Advantage. And, uh, you know, some of us were born with an unfair advantage. They have an advantage that is not uh, equal to everybody else, such as they were either born in a big city, so that give them more opportunities than others who were born in a smaller uh, place. Then uh, maybe their parents are wealthy or have a higher social status or um, uh, uh, city. Oh, they were uh, they have intelligent uh, genes. And uh, well, let me see the last one. <laughs> I have a cheat sheet. That's okay, good. I love it. I haven't thought of this. Uh, or they were grad or they graduated from an Ivy college. So these uh, one, two, three, four, five, these are lucky people. But these are very minority of uh, all of us. We, it's not all of us don't have that. So what's what about the rest of us? There's a second book that I would like to talk about. It's called The Third Door. So when you if you want to go to on the weekend, you want to go to a club or a graduation. Uh, celebration, you will see that there is what the first door, there's the first door that has a long lane, because it's crowded inside, they will not let you in unless people get out. The, if you once out, one in, two out, two in. So if you wait there in the first door, you're going to wait maybe hours, maybe you'll get in, maybe not. And the competition against your opportunity is high, very high. I love it. This, the second door is for the VIP, yes. which is the people with the unfair advantage. Those are people, you know, they were blessed. But if you think outside the box, and if you work on your skills, develop new acquired skills, communication, creativity, innovation, start thinking, there is a third door circle around the building, you will find a third door for the kitchen. You can use that door, keep knocking till somebody opens up, 
try to talk them into getting in. I don't know, do whatever you learned recently to try to get in. Your chances in getting in from the third door are much higher than getting in from the first door. So let's take that to the personal brand and creating your digital presence on social media. All of us are spending the same time on social media, all of us equally. But the, 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 the difference is how am I spending this time? Am I being consciously uh, present, uh, digitally present? Or am I being dragged by the notifications, the, the, you know, the uh, uh, fights, uh, I want to do that, and I'm not knowing exactly what's my objective. I don't have a goal to reach. I don't have all that stuff. So why not start being aware of what you're doing? Why am I here? How can I help people? Uh, by doing that, I'm creating a personal brand, a digital reputation. And this will come back to you tenfold. Everything I'm doing, I'm, all the content I'm sharing, I'm, my goal is to share valuable content, educational content in the field of digital skills. That's what I do. And this brings back to me leads and opportunities and jobs uh, without me going and looking for it. So this is, I wanted to talk about these two books. Absolutely. No, I think it's fantastic. And uh, by the way, before I forget, I really love your setup. I can tell that you do a lot of podcasting or you're on camera a lot. You've got the uh, the UVU microphone and the nice background. So yeah, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I guess maybe we could take some advice. So what would you, what would your suggestions be in terms of what strategies can you implement to be strategic? Yes. Uh, we, we talked. We spoke about the objective, and uh, we we on, on LinkedIn there are three things that I need to work on. Number one is optimize my presence. So I need to do a inventory of my profile. Is it done the right way? How would I know if it's, this is the right way to do my profile or not? There are a lot of advices abroad, but there is a neat, free little tool that you can download your profile as PDF, upload your profile to this tool, which called Resume Worded. I'll write it down for you. So you upload your PDF profile to Resume Worded and it scores your profile uh, from 100 and it tells you where are your weak points in the about section or experience and so on. So we need to optimize your presence. This is number one, it has to be top notch. Number two, you have to have a, a content strategy. There, there are four types of users on LinkedIn. Uh, publishers, engagers, uh, lurkers, and skeletons. <laughs> publishers are only 1%. And uh, uh, engagers are 9%. Lurkers are 30%. And skeletons are 60%. So only 10% are active on LinkedIn. 90% are not active. Wow. So, so that's an opportunity for you. If you are active on LinkedIn, you'll be one of the you know uh, special people. So uh, uh, from, from this point of view, we should work on a content strategy. So we should, uh, uh, the good thing about LinkedIn is unlike other social platforms, uh, it is mostly about valuable content. So we need to think about what sector are you in? Uh, what sources are you, uh, do you have? Books, uh, YouTube channels, and so on. And how can you create your content in the field of uh, your, uh, whatever your project is? So you need to start cooking. It's, 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 it's about cooking. You need to start cooking good content. If I just share uh, a headline and a link, nobody cares. Nobody can click for it. But if I go there, read it, summarize it, put it in bullet points uh, on LinkedIn, this is what I learned from reading this article. Uh, the link is in the comments. One, two, three, four. This is uh, 
consumable uh, content and people will dig people will read it and also i'm i'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, justin welsh and he 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 says when you write a text post you have three lines before you see read more so the three lines each line has to be one is, one is a hook the second one is uh, elevate interest <laughs> the third one is, you know, a call to action. And when they click see more, they have to see the meat. So you have to put the meat and everything. So it is all about valuable content. So we we have, uh, we fixed our, we optimized our profile, number one. Number two, we have good content that's valuable for our community. Number three is about networking. There are so many good tips about networking. When I send a connection request to someone without a message, it's a missed opportunity. I missed my opportunity. To elevate my opportunities, it is important to go and stalk these people, uh, create engagement on their profile, study what type of users are they. Are they publishers or engagers? Uh, check their type of engagement. Uh, what time do they engage? Who do they engage with? Is it short or long? What topics interest them? Uh, what is common between you and them? Is it the same city or the same subject or friends in common? Uh, and there's a fourth one that I forgot. So, <laughs> so when you talk to them, never sell them. The, the first message should not be about selling them. This is your objective to get them to approve your connection request. Yeah. So the message is about connecting with them, a real, real-time connection with them. Absolutely. So I, again, I'm fully aligned with you because from, again, uh, coming from job seeker perspective, um, you know, no one's going to set, hire you directly when you say, hi, ma'am, I'm looking for a job or I'm desperate or my salary is not meeting my, you know, directly. And, and it's the same in person when you meet someone, you know, you run into them at the coffee shop accidentally and do small little, uh, you know, chit chat or at a networking event, drinks or whatever, you know, what I'm, like the, the social uh, uh, so, um, area, you don't go, you don't go and tell them all of your problems all at once and yes. talk to them. <laughs> exactly. But people, unfortunately, they don't have time to develop that relationship, that rapport, but expect immediate results no matter what they're, they're seeking. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it is it's a missed opportunity. If I see someone uh, coming in with their pitch from the first message, we don't know each other. We don't we don't talk like that. So it is important to create to work on that first connection to do it right from the first time. So I always I always do a start with a compliment. Uh, I find something that I can compliment them with. Compliment takes you really good places. So it's a, a impressive profile, impressive career path. This is how I start with. I saw your profile uh, at my uh, at a common friend a common connection uh, page. And I was intrigued by your comment. So I said, why not let's uh, connect to learn more from you. End of story. That's it. So I just leave it there. And uh, if it happens, it happens. And if it's not, it's not. And when we become connections, I also keep an eye on their profile. If they are a decision maker that I am interested to work in their company, I will see what uh, relevance i will seek relevance to their content so i will see what type of content do, to, do they share and sometimes i answer them in the comment section sometimes i send them privately but i it is always about them not about me i haven't pitched them yet i'm just telling them uh, what they want to hear and uh, Indirectly, they will see your content. They will see your skills and abilities and everything, and they might approach you. If not, you can approach them maybe at the third step. Uh, it's not the first or the second. Fantastic. I, I think uh, it, it's really good. And I wish that more people maybe thought a, bit, a little bit more about the way LinkedIn is designed and worked rather than just 
you know, reaching to people for their needs. It's all about relationships and, and connections. So, yeah, you've been amazing. I think, uh, you know, I would like to wrap it up in, in, in terms of um, some final thoughts. And is there any services, do you offer anything uh, for, for people on the platform to connect with you? Yes, I do. Uh, uh, people approach me to do a content uh, optimization for them. So I uh, help them uh, have a really optimized uh, profile. I do that service. I also have a digital community that we meet on a weekly basis for a small, short, small membership. Uh, so I have these two things that I'm offering. Other than that, I do consultations with big uh, B2B companies that uh, I help them with the digital media setup and management uh, for a short or a long-term contract. Fantastic. Amazing. I would certainly love your uh, your details so I can pop them down below and people can connect with you. You've got an amazing presence on the digital space. I really appreciate your time. Um, if there's any sort of final words in closing or pieces of advice, the floor is yours. Okay. I haven't thought of that one, but let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Connect with you. That can be. Uh, that can yeah. Be. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, if you're looking uh, on tips and uh, digital skills, uh, uh, how tos, I post uh, every day about these things, uh, and I bring really, really valuable content. My content is in Arabic, most of it, ninety-nine percent of it. And uh, so, uh, if you are looking for this type, uh, I'm your person. I'm your man. Fantastic. Carla, thank you so much. I really appreciate it once again. And let's keep connected. Sure. Thank you very much, Teresa. Bye-bye.